Okay, let's take a look at derivative rules. Um, first, for the exponentials. Okay, if f of x equals e to the x, the derivative of this will always be e to the x again. Okay, that's one of the nicest derivatives. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now, If your function does not have the base e, that's what we have right now. B is just an a general base. You, when you take the derivative, you'll get just about the same thing, but with a little extra piece. The root of a of, um, general base b to the x will be b to the x again, just like e to the x is e to the x. But with the coefficient of natural log of b. Again, b is a constant and natural log of b is also a constant. So we basically just put a constant in front of b to the x. But we have to do this whenever the base is b. Next, Let's say the input value is u rather than x, and u again represents a function. So we now are using a function as input. This is a function within a function or a composite. If the input is a composite and you take the derivative of e to the u, the derivative will be e to the u. Times the chain rule, which is u prime. So again, that's chain rule because u is a function and not a variable. Lastly, let's say your exponential was a, any general base raised to a function. Then the derivative of this will be the natural log of b as a coefficient times b to the u. And because u is a function, we have to use chain rules, so all of this times u prime. Okay. Okay. Now, let's look at um, the um, rules for the logarithms. Okay, let's say f of x equals um, natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay, making sure I'm using the absolute value so I can get the u's um, both sides. The derivative of this, again, is 1 over x. If your logarithm is using a general base and not e, log base b of the absolute value of x, then the derivative will be 1 over x again, and the x in the denominator gets multiplied by the coefficient natural log of b. Thirdly, if your uh, function has a function as an input, say natural log of the absolute value of a function, then the derivative will again be 1 over u. But you'll have to also employ the chain rule, so 1 over u times u, u prime. prime. And lastly, Let's say you have a log of a general base, and you're taking that of a function u. Well, the derivative of this will be 1 over u, and then multiply it, the u in the denominator, multiply it by natural log of b, and then times u prime for chain rule. Chain okay. rule. Okay. And this will give you your derivatives.
Okay, let's look at problem number 18 on page 327. Okay, okay, we have this function here, and it's made out of two functions. These two are multiplying, so we're going to use power rule. Oh, product rule, should I say? Product rule. So 4x squared minus x, natural log of x, plus 4x squared minus x, natural log of x. And now we'll take a derivative of this first term here, and a derivative of this second term there. Now the derivative of this will be 8x minus 1 times the natural log of x. And the derivative of a natural log of x is going to be 1 over x. Now from here, I can simplify this just a little bit by pulling out an x out of this term. x times 4x minus 1. And then we can multiply these two and they'll simplify down to 1. So we get 8x minus 1, natural log of x, plus 4x minus 1. Let's take a look at 24. 24, um, this is a function u. So, when we take a derivative of this, we'll take the derivative of the outside, so 1 over x squared minus x, times the derivative of x squared minus x. Okay, the derivative of this will be one over x squared minus x. The of this will be two x minus one. So let's put that in the numerator here. Two x minus one. And that's it. Okay, let's take a look at problem number twenty-eight. Um, we're going to treat this right here as an inner function. Let's say u. So what we'll end up with is h of u equaling u and the derivative of this, the natural log of u, the h prime of u equals 1 over u times u prime. So we'll have h, the derivative of h of x equaling 1 over 3x plus 1 negative x plus 1 times the derivative of the 3x plus 1 negative x plus 1. Okay, so we need to take a derivative of this and we need to use the um, product rule. So what we have is 3x plus 1 times negative x plus 1. And here we'll have 3x plus 1 times negative x plus 1 plus 3x plus 1 times negative x plus 1. And we'll take the derivative of this first term and this second term here. And that'll be our product rule for this expression here. Okay, the derivative of this is 3 times negative x plus 1. The derivative of this term right here is negative 1 times 3x plus 1 all over 3x plus 1 times negative x plus 1. Okay, when I distribute the numerator, we're going to get a negative 3x minus plus 3, a negative 3x, and a minus 1. So when we collect my terms, we'll end up with a negative 6x and a positive 2. And all of that will be over 3x plus 1 times negative x plus 1.